As the year gathered steam, the winter rain failed to arrive along with the builder. We slid quietly into a resigned despondency. You always want snuggles. We got on with other projects, like learning to cook on the stove and use it as a slow cooker. Chris got on with other DIY projects that he'd been desperate to try, sorting out the future cold tub. The old wine tub is quite a feature when you walk into the farm, and with our plans for the farmyard, we wanted to make it stand out. The mild weather actually meant that we could spend an awful lot of time outdoors, that perhaps in a normal winter wouldn't have been possible, so plenty of time to work in the garden and structure the land. Then quite suddenly, and after many dashed hopes and false starts, the day arrived with a new local builder. Really local. He too lives in our village. The rebuilt from the walls that Chris had already removed was taken away, and the last remaining sections of that wall completely removed. And before we knew it, it was onto the very last wall. It had to come down, even with a little help from one of our neighbours. A gentleman who lives in the village, whose aunt owned the house. He came along with his tractor and his trailer and also joined in taking down one of the walls. Well, we've waited. We've waited so long. And now the walls are coming down so fast. The entire job of removing the walls and the rubble was done in a morning. We'd waited six, nearly seven months. Now the next task was to clear out everything, to strip the walls, to strip the floors, and clear everything away so that we could start reconstructing. Sadly, the beautiful wooden tiles that were on the floor couldn't be saved. They were riddled with woodworm and had to go. This is Grace. Well, I've called her Grace. Give me beautiful. She's one of the other dogs in the village that has now made friends with us. And she comes, bless her, and sits at the gate. Ah! And all she wants is a love. And I want to let her in, but... Yeah. You're beautiful. 
you gorgeous, Grace. You are lovely. Yeah, Anya. Oh. Yo, I know, sweetie. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me go back to work. So that's two more dogs that I've made friends with. So, the loveliness that is Grace. Let me go over here. I've called her Grace because she's so sweet. And I would love to let her in, but I just feel like she's, it's like Zicola. I mean, Zicola came to play and I think Grace just wants your attention. No, Bozo. Um, and you feel really bad, you think, do they know? Do they know that it's like, well, you let that other dog in, but you're not letting me in. Look at her, she sat there at the gate. So Grace is, I've called her Grace, is one of our, somebody who lives up in the village and she kind of lives on the other side of the road from where the end of the drive is for the farm. And um, she's a gentle little thing. You kind of just were nice to her and now she comes for a cuddle all the time and food. And then Zicola comes in. Bozo's on his chain because there's a dog on heat. Who? Grace is back. Oh, look at her. Yeah, so there's another dog on heat in the village. So Bozo's polaxed. Um, yes, talking about you. So, um, and if I can say it, this is a very English phrase. I don't know if it translates or not. But this other dog, I think she's quite a mature lady, has, to put it bluntly, set her cap at him. So it feels like the last few days as she was coming into heat, she decided that Bozo was the one. And she's actively pursued him. <laughs> so we caught her the other day. She's at the gate, like, spraying her scent around. He's gone crazy. And then on Friday, Friday or Saturday, he got out went off up into the village, it was it was a wet, horrible day, and we're like, we couldn't find him. We're like, oh no. And then it was confirmed that this dog was on heat. And then the next minute, he comes tearing down the drive, followed by the female and another bigger dog. Bozo's soaking wet, filthy dirty, blood on his nose and on his foot. And it's like, oh God, he's been fighting. And she's after him. And then the next day, we sort of had to chain him up. The next day, she's round. She, she, she's, today she's done it. She's gone, she's, they've, they, they're letting her wander around the village. She's gone down the path and he's going nuts. And the other day she was up round the back of the house and he's going completely nuts. So, um, he's now permanently on a rope because at every opportunity, we even give him a small chink and he's off. So, right, I'm off to stack the wood from the floor um, because our job now is to, um, is to just clean all the debris from that house because the guy who's doing the major part of the work is um, coming back hopefully on Saturday to cut the holes for the windows and then we can order the windows and then we've got some planning to do on where does everything go. So we're just stripping it and I'm stacking wood. Hopefully, in a month, 
we might have this thing um, where is it? sealed. Sorry, my voice is really cranky. So this week, Chris has removed all of the floor, cleared all the channels for the where the walls were so that they could be replastered, pulled all the electrics out, or most of it anyway, ready for reorganising. And, um, and we've put up a, um, a tarpaulin, I'll show you, on the front, so that when the, the gap for the windows is cut, we can roll the tarpaulin across. The idea being that it stops uh, all the rain and coming in. We still haven't had any rain. We had the rain that weekend, and for a couple of days it was damp and it was wet and it was giving everything, but we had significant rain for one Sunday and then the rest of the week was damp. <coughs> Since then we're back in that cycle where it is the end of February is beautiful. Um, the weather forecast was predicting rain on Friday. It didn't arrive. Uh, Saturday could be. It's predicting rain again for this week. I think there was meant to be some today. No, it's later on in the week. So it's that pattern again where they forecast rain for five days ahead and then gradually it just disappears and it doesn't appear, it doesn't come. And now there's, you walk out on the mountain and there's just very few of the streams that are actually uh, running. You got your sunspot back. Oh. It's quite exciting to watch things change, to see the house begin suddenly to take shape and plants to grow. Despite the difficulties with the weather, it always amazes me. Thank you for watching. If you've been watching these stories for a while now, it's so lovely to have you. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing. It would be nice to see you again. Now, don't go away though. There's far more to tell you. And something that is slightly troubling. But I'll carry on with the story and tell you a little at the end. slowly working my way on the garden. So as you can see, all the earth that's being moved from the farmyard so we can go down to the bare rock and just see what the rock is doing and um, when and if it does rain, where the water goes. Because when it does rain and there is really, really heavy rain, that whole area becomes a bit quagmire. So we want to control we want to, to direct the water more easily <clears throat> and also utilize it. I think um, I was seriously thinking about how we um, store water, which is very difficult when you're on the side of a mountain cause, and you're digging into rock all the time. So the, the soil in the yard is, is maybe three, four centimeters thick on top of the rock. Um, and so if you want to create spaces, you have to dig into rock. Um, we're not sure on, on this terrace how deep the rock is before you get to it. Um, but certainly the soil is very much, um, there's a lot of minerals in it. There's a lot of, of um, erosion because of the rock. So you've got a lot of that. There's lots of little stones and... Um, but <clears throat> so for now we're piling the soil, the earth from the yard here and then we'll use that once we've determined where we're going to put paths and beds in the yard, we'll do raised beds. We'll use the rest of the soil to level up the area outside the, the White House for the terrace. Um, 
because that's all higgledy piggledy and and I've been making progress with the other areas in the garden so some I've cultivated as you already know but others so I've tried to keep some of the um, the plants that have appeared there's lots of dandelions appearing and I want to keep those there's um, dock leaves and I'm for now I'm keeping those and there's other things that I want to know what they do. I want to know the cycle and then I understand which ones I want to keep. Um, and there's wild marigolds there and they're, they're kind of pr providing quite a nice ground cover and they've been flowering since before Christmas. So I want to keep those and encourage them. So when they've been seeding, I've been encouraging them to grow in other places. And the other day I separated um, I tidied up the bed outside the kitchen which has got some oxide daisies in it and they were all running and it, they were too tightly bound so I managed to, to pull some of those and they, the stems had the, the bases, the tubers had roots on them so, so they've been repurposed and replanted, sort of encourage them to grow in other places. So it's like trying to, I'm experimenting I suppose, trying to use what's already here watch what's already here collect things that are around here and and introduce them so watch them carefully and then plant things so we've got things going to seed and planting seeds and then going to the market and buying but we're really cautious because um because of the lack of water this winter you just don't know what the impact will be now for spring and for the rest of the year i mean I was looking in my journal for this time last year. I mean, we had we had days of heavy, heavy rain where the water was just pouring everywhere. And um, we haven't had any of that this year at all. So you you don't know what the what the water table is like and and, and how that has an impact for the rest of the year. Because I think from what we understand, obviously last year was our first year here, um, the, the spring and early summer, and then even into early autumn, were wet. Um, uh, there was lots of days of rain, which to our English sensibilities didn't seem any different than what than we were used to. For here, it was like, oh no, it should be really hot. It should be dry and it should be hot, it shouldn't be raining. So last year's pattern was very different and, um, and this year's is even more. So, so how that has an impact when you're trying to learn how to plant a garden, I'm not sure. As I finish this story, the house now has two holes waiting for windows. But as I sit in the early hours of the morning, finishing this video, this story, Bozo sits next to me. He's been up all night diarrhea and sickness and it's getting worse. I'm very worried and I don't know what will happen. I'll tell you more next time. Goodbye.